Okay, let's keep talking about Article 250. We're going to see some changes that I love in 250.36 for impedance grounded systems. All right, now listen, some of you guys, as soon as you hear impedance grounded systems, maybe you just hit the next button and you're like, I don't care about impedance grounded systems. I don't know what they are. I don't want to know. Hey, I get it. I totally get it. Um, I think it's worth understanding whether you ever see one or install one or not. I think from a theory perspective, it makes you a better electrician if you understand different systems. So impedance grounded systems 250.36, uh, lots of changes here, quite frankly, made for, for accuracy. You know, I remember way back, well, first of all, let me say this. Uh, it used to be called high impedance grounded neutral systems. Let's start there. That's what it used to be called, high impedance grounded neutral systems. Okay. Well, why does it have to be high impedance? Because there's certainly low impedance grounding as well. So <laughs> I don't know why we ever said high impedance when it should have just been impedance. So right off the bat, we have high impedance grounding, we have low impedance grounding, and as far as the NEC is concerned, they're all the same because it's just it's impedance grounding. Okay, so impedance grounded systems. It used to say high impedance grounded neutral systems, which has always driven me crazy. Way back in the, okay, believe it or not, prior to the 2005 NEC, we did not define the word neutral, all right? We just talked about the, the ground-dead conductor, and we, we talked about the neutral conductor in Article 310. We said, oh, the neutral conductor carries the unbalanced current, and blah, 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 but we didn't define it. Then we defined it in the 2008 code. All right. Now, when they made that definition in the in the the first phase of the code revision process, back then they used to call it the ROP, which we now call the first draft. So when they first made the changes, so they they added a definition for neutral conductor, and it's like, yeah, it's the it's the conductor that's connected to the neutral point, and it carries unbalanced load during normal conditions, and there you go. So when they made that definition, I was happy. I think we should have a definition for neutral, but. And we also use the word neutral here in 250.36. Let me tell you something. An impedance grounded system does not have a neutral. And I actually reached out to my friend uh, Chuck Mello at the time. Well, shout out to Chuck. And he was on panel. He was on code making panel five. Been there forever. And I reached out to Chuck and I said, hey, Chuck, um, I'm going to defer to you. You're an expert at this stuff. And, and I still believe that. Chuck's, Chuck's brilliant. And I reached out to Chuck and I said, look, we use the term neutral in 250.36. I don't know what word we should use, but it cannot be neutral because this system does not have a neutral as defined in Article 100 now. And Chuck was like, oh my gosh, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Let's change that. So, so Chuck did a nice job at the last second. He changed it and he said, okay, this wire right here that goes between the grounding impedance and the XL point, we're going to call that the system grounding something conductor or whatever. He's like, I don't even know that it needs a name. It just can't be called neutral. So they fixed that. But the title of the article of the section was still impedance grounded neutral systems. And this system doesn't have a neutral, right? So finally, in the 2023 code, what happened is a very close friend of mine named Eric Stromberg. Eric and I have worked together for decades. Uh, Eric got onto the code making panel and listen, Eric knows impedance grounding, okay? That, uh, if I have a question on grounding impedances, I'm calling Eric. So Eric got on the code making panel and he kind of made it his mission for the 2023 to fix 250.36 and they did and I'm thrilled with what they did. So an impedance grounded neutral system, I already said it, I can't believe that. An impedance grounded system <laughs> is a Y connected system, all right? Now it's almost always gonna be 480 or higher voltage. So 480 volts, it is a Y connected system. It does not have a neutral conductor, all right? So here's the thing, 250.36 says, you can use an impedance grounded system for three phase systems rated 480 volts through 1000 volts or more as long as one, two, and three are complied with. Number one, conditions of maintenance and supervision ensure that only qualified persons are going to service the installation. Look, you can't put this thing in a regular old office building or a 7-Eleven or somewhere. This is, this is sophisticated stuff. We need to limit it to industrial facilities. Number two, you need to have ground detectors installed. And what ground detectors are is one of the reasons that you would, if, if you're using high impedance, 
right? You set this resistance to a high value. That means you're going to have low amounts of fault current. And the reason you would want to use a high impedance grounded system is if you have a ground fault, that impedance limits the amount of current that flows under fault condition, right? So think about it. It's 480 volt, right? Measured between any two phases. Now, if I was to measure between any phase and the XL point, you would get 277, right? Now, that's not to say that you can utilize 277. You can't. There's not a neutral. But the voltage from XO to 480 would be 277. Now, just to make the math easy, let's say I set this resistance at 277 ohms. Now, if I were to take one of these conductors, smack it up against the metal parts, Fault current would travel along the metal parts, right? There's, there's equipment grounding conductors everywhere, just like a normal system. Fault current would travel along the metal parts, travel back to the source, and it would run into this massive 277 ohm resistor. How much current would flow? If the voltage is 277 and the impedance is 277, that means the current is one amp. Not gonna trip any breakers. That's why I put it in because I don't want breakers tripping, right? I got a process happening here, man. If, if, an unexpected, if an unexpected power loss happened, I could lose millions of dollars. I could create something that's unsafe, right? Maybe, uh, maybe when the equipment fail, uh, uh, shuts down unexpectedly, it will off gas something point, you know? I mean, there's good reasons to use high impedance grounding. So if that happens and a ground fault happens, but the breaker doesn't trip, that's fine. That's what we want. But we have to have indication that that occurred and we call that ground detection, all right? So we have to have ground detectors to let us know that a ground fault has occurred. And then number three, line to neutral loads are not allowed. This is strictly for three phase line to line loads. There is no neutral on the system. Line to neutral loads are not permitted. All right, here is an example of an impedance grounded system. This is a small one. And this is the ground detection system. If you, right here, the green light is on, everything is working perfectly. If that thing shuts off or it turns red and this light over here on the left turns on, that means we have a ground fault and we need to figure out what's going on. Now, if I open this piece of equipment, it looks like this. That is the actual resistor, all right? And uh, a slang term for this is a toaster because it kind of, when you look at it, it actually, it, it's just like a toaster, right? I mean, a toaster, a toaster you have in your kitchen, it's just a big old resistor, right? Same thing here. So 250.36a says the grounding impedance device, which is the actual impedance, must be installed between the grounding electrode conductor and the impedance grounding conductor that's connected to the system neutral point. Love it. That wire didn't have a name. That, that, we used to call it a neutral <laughs> back before the 2008. And that's when I got, I got in touch with Chuck and said, Chuck, we got to fix this. And he said, absolutely. Let's just call it the wire. <laughs> I don't know. It'll, Eric came along and said, okay, I, I got an idea. Let's call it the impedance grounding conductor. Awesome. So this conductor is the impedance grounding conductor, right? Beautiful thing. All right. Between up between the grounding electric conductor and the system neutral point. All right, let's keep reading. The impedance grounding conductor, insulation and ampacity. The impedance grounding conductor uh, must have an ampacity of not less than the fault current, which of course is determined by the value of the grounding impedance, I equals Z over R, and it must never be smaller than eight gauge copper or six gauge aluminum. All right, so just like service conductors and ground edge conductors, we have a minimum here. It can't be a, it can't be a 14 gauge wire. All right, so we're gonna have a minimum, but we're gonna size it based on the amount of fault current that it's expected to see. How much current do, how much current is it expected to see? Well, that's simply gonna be a function of I equals Z over R, right? Whatever the resistance of the toaster is, we're gonna divide the line to ground voltage divided by the resistor. That's gonna tell us the ground fault current. That's gonna tell us how you size the grounding impedance conductor. The grounding impedance conductor does not need to be routed with the circuit conductors. That's something that drives people insane the first time they see it, is like you got this wire that's off just by itself. And it's like, wait a minute, 300.3 says all the conductors and everything, they gotta be grouped together, it's, a, it's fine. It's totally fine. There's no reason to, to, to route these things with the phase conductors. It's not a problem. So there you go. 250.36 impedance grounded systems. Nice job by Code Making Panel 5. Love what you guys did on this one.